Keeping up to date with tech is hard. So today I'm going to share with you the top five biggest things to happen in tech this past week. So you don't have to spend all your time reading about it. Also, before we get into it, you know what I have to say, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, and career related videos. Leave in the comments any other video topics you want me to make. And all right, now let's get into the news. Did you know Apple is apparently testing out a new ChatGPT-like AI bot? No, no, it's not all going to be AI, I promise you, but it is really trending in the news. And honestly, it's a big tech revolution in my opinion. It's a long, that's a strong word, but I do think it's going to really change our world. So there is AI related news, of course. According to a new report that was released on Bloomberg, the tech giant has created a chat bot that some engineers are internally referring to as Apple GPT. Now, at first I was like this, we don't need another chat, but we've been there, we've done that. But I think a bit of competition is actually a good thing. What do we have now? Claude, Bard, chat GPT, and now potentially Apple GPT. And in this report, it goes on to say that Apple has built their own framework that they labeled as Ajax, which is being used to create large language models. And apparently Ajax runs on Google Cloud and was built with Google JAX, the search giant's machine learning framework. Now, Apple has really dominated in every area. Well, okay, there's been a few they haven't that they get into. I'm wondering, I'm very curious to see, will they be the king of these chatbot AI wars? It seems like every company right now is fighting for number one. I think competition will be a really good thing though, meaning that it will hold each company to a higher standard and may the best chatbot win. I feel like every time I do a news report, this guy always makes his way into it. You gotta, whether you hate him or love him, one thing you have to give him, he knows how to stay in the news. Do you remember this truck? I know, it feels like forever ago. I actually forgot about it till I saw these headlines. Elon Musk is announcing that they are starting production for the new Tesla Cybertruck. And this truck is pretty intense. I can't imagine going for a walk in the city and seeing this massive truck just driving by. They are claiming the first sub 19 foot pickup truck with four doors and a six foot bed. This is really made for camping, the outdoor life which I'm not about. There are reports that Tesla has told the suppliers to be ready for Cybertruck release candidates by September. That's coming very soon. And production is already going to be taking place in early October. Now, this brings up the big debate. I've seen some big tech influencers uh, betting on this actually. Will paying customers receive their first Cybertruck by end of this year? Comment if you agree or think they will. And the company's been running some tests with this Cybertruck and there's this image going around here that you can see the window wiper, the window washer going and I gotta say, you're not selling me on it. I know it's an affordable price. I believe they said it's around 40,000 US. Now, according to reports, back in May at a shareholder meeting, Elon suggested they are going to make 250,000 of these trucks to start with. And then from there, flex based on demand. Which brings up the question, are they a little too late? Is this kind of, you know, two years after the first announcement? Has the hype died? Would you buy one of these trucks? Leave down below. Now we all know the economy is, well, not doing great. Let's just put it that way. And some tech companies are really taking this to the extreme with continuing to cut off thousands of employees. And one thing that really stood out to me is Microsoft recently made an announcement that they will not raise salaries for full-time employees in 2023 across the board. If I was a Microsoft employee, I would not be impressed. And if it wasn't for the bad economy, I'd probably be out. Now, one of the good things though about this is not giving raises means more money for the company, which means hopefully keeping on more and retaining more employees. Meta recently announced a similar kind of mindset where they told managers promotions will be harder to get and less frequent. They didn't give a timeline on this. It was more just a general this is gonna be hard to get paid more. We've seen a ton of these big tech companies doing layoffs and saying about no promotions or less promotions happening frequently, which makes me wonder, are more people moving to the startup environment? Startups that are being well-funded, can take care of employees. And what does this mean for big tech retaining quality? Quality, not just anyone, but quality employment. I think where big tech has some people kind of by the hands, if you will, we'll go with hands, is because a lot of people are very scared right now with a terrible economy going on. They have bills to pay, they need a stable income, and you hear every day of someone being laid off. So whatever these big tech companies are saying, employees are kind of just doing. All right, I remember this headline that I'm about to share with you popping up in the news quite a few years ago, and similar to the Cybertruck, it's finally making a comeback. Amazon is set to launch paid by Palm technology at Whole Food locations by end of this year. Can you imagine going into a Whole Food store 
and just being able to, to use your hand to pay for things sounds pretty wild to me. Now this technology is called Amazon One and it's a biometric technology that lets users enter and pay for items at the store by placing a palm over a scanning device. So how does this work? It works similar when I was reading about it to how you can unlock your iPhone with your fingerprint. Just like your fingerprints, your palm is unique just to you. It's one of a kind. And they have an Amazon, it's called Amazon One device. They have the Amazon One device that is designed to read your palm which will essentially create you a unique signature. So essentially what you are doing is you are connecting your palm to a stored credit card, one of your credit cards, and then from there, you can check out at Whole Foods with your palm. It's kind of random to me how Whole Foods and Amazon did this collaboration. Like where, where did that lie? Why did they decide on Whole Foods? Especially Whole Foods demographic. It doesn't seem like the number one tech savvy demographic. Really curious to see how this will go down. Honestly, I'd be a bit hesitant at first to connect my palm to my credit card, but like all technology, we always say that and then we end up doing it. Would you connect your palm to your credit card? Does that risk like people wanting my palm? We're not gonna go there. All right, it seems just like we started with Apple, we're ending with Apple and this time it's pretty intense if this goes through. Apple is saying it will remove services such as FaceTime, iMessage from the UK rather than weaken security. So let's back up a step and I will tell you how this all came to be. This is happening specifically in the UK for a bill that is trying to be passed. The government has opened an eight week consultation on the proposed amendments to the IPA, which essentially enables the storage of internet browsing records for 12 months and authorizes the bulk collection of personal data. So Apple actually is calling this the snoopers chart. This is what they have dubbed this uh, act. So here are some things Apple is opposing. Of course, having to tell the home office of any changes to product security features before they are released. They also would be required for non UK based companies to comply with changes that would affect their product globally, such as providing a backdoor end to end encryption and having to take action immediately if a notice to disable or block a feature is received from the home office. So basically, the UK is trying to run Apple now. There are other companies that are really opposing this. I'm sure you can guess a few of them, such as WhatsApp and Signal. Apple summed it up by saying it would not make changes to security features specifically for one country that would weaken a product for all users. I really wonder, I can't imagine living in a world without FaceTime or iMessage. Ugh. And I really wanted to move to London. It's so great. We just visited there. Curious to hear your thoughts. Do you think this will go through or is this more of a tactic, a threat? Leave in the comments. All right, I hope you enjoyed this top five biggest things to happen in tech this past week. This is something that is really difficult to stay up on and I hope to provide you an easy way to do just that. Leave in the comments if you want me to continue with this series, what other kind of tech news you want to hear about and I'll see you soon.